Anthony Volpe just had his first big moment in pinstripes. Could this be the jolt that gets him to be rookie of the year? Let's discuss on today's Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, and with me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granato. Steve, look at you. What's going on? Oh, so big. <laughs> look at me. To our audio <laughs> listeners, we have a brand new layout here on YouTube. Uh, and for our everydayers on YouTube, hi. You don't get to see me this big very often. Uh, you will now. This is how we're rolling now. Yeah. Hey, on today's show... Game two preview against Baltimore. Of course, last night's big win we're going to talk about as well. Garrett Cole gave up two home runs in that game, Stace. Mm -hmm. We got to talk about this home run problem. It's starting to come back here in the month of May. So we're going to kind of dissect and see if there's anything that can be done to tweak and change and, and avoid these home runs, pro uh, home run problem. First, Stacey, Yanks, walk it off six to five. Anthony Volpe with the big sack fly. Uh, you don't say big sack fly very often, but he did it. Yankees yeah. came back twice, twice. Uh, yeah. to win that game last night. That was a big win because the Blue Jays beat the heck out of the Rays. And the Yankees, the least, I mean, what, to what the hell happened there? Um, <laughs> and the Yankees beat the team right ahead of them in the division. So this was this is big. And we talk about how the head-to-head -head matchups aren't as much this season. And these are the things that really count. So this, you know, Cole not looking good, coming back twice, winning the way they did. This may have been one of the biggest wins of the year. It, I, I put it up there. I mean, yeah. it definitely, we, we mentioned before the, the game started on our, what was it? Our Tuesday show that uh, this was the biggest m pitching matchup. Uh, Cole versus, uh, they were saying Bradish. We were saying Bradish last year. I don't know what's going on. I, um, <laughs> I called them Bradish all during that episode, right? And it was like, I heard Michael K. He was like, Bradish. I was like, since when is it Bradish? Anyway, we were calling them Bradish last year. Uh, <laughs> this happens all the time. Uh, side note, total side note. When I was in the Northwest League calling play-by-play -play for the Boise Hawks, rest in peace, uh, we played against Isaiah Kiner Falefa. And I said kind of Falifa and that, cause that's what they told us. Complete side note. You never know. You never yeah. know with these people. Um, anyway, so it took me years to get back to kind of Falifa. Anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. I mean, Bader with the big shot that kind of gave him a little jolt to come back in it. Rizzo with four knocks, including that big hit in the, uh, what was that? The eighth inning, uh, seventh inning, seventh inning, I think it was seventh. uh, that little flip out towards left, uh, for his fourth hit of the game. Judge, speaking of big hits, I mean, I, I said know. this yesterday. What more can you say? I, I, I yeah. it, leave a comment down below on YouTube. Let me know if you felt like he was going to hit that home run because I felt like he was going to hit that home run. I know it was Batista, I know that he's good, but for some reason, Aaron Judge is just so good right now that it feels like he can hit nearly anybody. And I just felt it in my gut and I laughed as soon as he hit it. Well, he was hitless before that. Yeah. So he, he couldn't figure out Bradish Bradish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's his full name now, Bradish Bradish. Yeah. Volpe the sack fly in the 10th inning. There's a couple of things I want to discuss about this game in particular. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Cole, as we mentioned. Uh, I also want to talk about the bottom of the seventh inning in just a second. But Volpe with that sack fly, let alone two big defensive plays of the game, too. <sighs> Yes. <laughs> so, Stacy, mm -hmm. the numbers may not say this, but do you think Anthony Volpe can be a leading candidate to win Rookie of the Year? Sure. If he keeps up his performance, yeah, I could see that. Like, do they his do bat would, is, is his it, bat would clearly have to yeah, take off here? Yeah. Now, do they do with the Rookie of the Year, uh, like the top three? last people like oh these are going to be the last three that you vote the like, finalists voted, like whatever. the finalists do they do that for rookie of the year well too? once once they do that uh for like the other awards and stuff that the votes are already in right that's true so it's just it's honestly that's just marketing yeah like but, it's I mean, down he could to be Otani, a... yeah. judge and you know it's just like well 
it, what do you mean it's down to? It's already decided. That's right. They've decided <laughs> before the playoffs. Uh, but yeah. unlike the NBA, they don't announce everything before the playoffs are over. <laughs> yeah, I always find that weird. NHL does that too. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Uh, anyway. But I could. But, I could see him doing it. I could see him sure. making it to where he's really in the discussion for rookie of the year. He's not right now, right? No, no, no. No, he's not. His bat is just not there Mm-mm. to to win rookie of the year. Um, some other candidates, the, the leading candidates in my mind right now are Josh Jung uh, from Texas. He mm. He's had a really, really good year and is part of a really good club. Uh, Hunter Brown from the Astros, right-handed starter. He's had a nice start to the season. Yep. Uh, he's pitching pretty well. Gunnar Henderson, of course, uh, is playing well like everybody anticipated. And Grayson Rodriguez, uh, both from Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean – I, I, I've had the fortune of watching a couple of these guys. I had Gunnar, <laughs> watch Gunnar Henderson destroy the Rail Riders last year. I saw Grayson Rodriguez carve up the Rail Riders last year. Um, so, yeah, I, there there is – I wouldn't say super stiff competition right now, but it is mm-hmm. also me. And right. I think <laughs> being the West Coast guy that I am, I think I have to also say that Logan O'Hoppy probably was the leading candidate uh, before he got hurt. Oh, he, he, was right. having, he was having an incredible start to the season. Yeah. Uh, so – in my money, it was going to be Logan O'Hoppy. Uh, let us know. Do you think Anthony Volpe can win Rookie of the Year? Again, I think the bat really needs to. It doesn't have to be three fifty or anything no. crazy here. But right. He needs to pick it up offensively. Yeah, he needs to be more like two seventy, two eighty. He's got to be up there. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's he's just not uh, right now. Volpe right now is a batting two oh seven. Yeah. <laughs> that's not going to win you rookie of the year no. unless you hit like 40 bombs or something. That was my old subway uh, stop 207th street. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. Uh, okay. Stacy, the bottom of the seventh. <sighs> yes. Boone calls for the bunt with DJ LeMahieu on a safety squeeze. It didn't work on the first try Mm-mm. and it obviously did not work on the second try. Do you agree or disagree with the move? Disagree. I hated it. I hated everything about it. And if they ended up losing that game, I was going to blame that for them losing. <laughs> I was Why so angry it? with it. What, what, I, what I, makes you so mad about it that, at that point? I don't know. I just, I don't like DJ bunting. I don't really like bunts for some reason, because I feel like no one knows how to really do one well anymore. Like I feel like most guys screw it up. I just didn't like it in that spot. I really didn't. I mean, obviously, I would I wouldn't be this angry if it actually worked out. But I still would have been slightly annoyed at Boone for doing it. But th- I was so I was livid. I was livid. Was it the 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 fact that he tried it twice, or was it the fact that it was on just in general? I think in general. I don't know why I have such an aversion to bunts, but I really do. I just I don't like them. I don't like them. I'm going to go on the complete opposite side. I'm not a bunting <laughs> person, mm-hmm. but I think in that spot, you can't anticipate that you're going to get the top of the order to come back at that moment. Right. And have a legitimate chance to win the game. Uh, DJ's not been swinging good. Mm, true. The safety squeeze was on. It wasn't a suicide. Mm-hmm. It was a safety. So you weren't a uh, gambling Glaber from third. He got it down. Yeah. I think your anger is misdirected. Okay. I think you need to be more. And I think Yankee fans in general, because there were a lot of boos. I don't know what they're directed at. Maybe just <laughs> the situation at Yankee Stadium. Last I think time. it was just the situation. Yeah, I think. I think the boos and the anger needs to be towards DJ LeMahieu. Mm. And I think this is, brings up an important part because I watched this just like you did. And I knew people were going to be like, why did Boom do that? Mm-hmm. Glaber needs, or pardon me, uh, DJ needs to execute. Yeah. He needs to execute. He's a major league baseball player. That bunt has to be better than that. Yeah. No ifs, ands, or buts. We get mad at coaches a lot. Players know that they have to execute, and DJ did not. And he had two chances to right. execute that bunt and missed twice. <laughs> right. That's on him. That's yeah. not on Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone was putting the Yankees in a situation to win there Mm -hmm. and DJ failed yeah he just did and that's just for a major league baseball player it's it's not okay you you can't do that you you got two chances man like you missed the first try and now you got two strikes now you got to swing away you go for the sack fly whatever but if you get a second go around man that that and it was a pitch that was very buntable right yeah just saying 
I still hate it. But on lighter news, <laughs> on good news, I just thought it was important that we o- don't always just on boom, 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 boom. Oh, no, you know? I know. I just, uh, yeah. I know. I know how you feel, but I'm just saying, DJ's got to execute. Yeah. Uh, point made. Cole. Yes. 2000th strikeout. Uh, he got Jorge Mateo with a 2 2 fastball at 97. Uh, 87th in MLB history. He's the third fastest to get to 2000 strikeouts behind Chris Sale and Pedro Martinez. Stacey, I thought this was interesting uh, with those guys ahead of him, obviously. Massive strikeout leaders. Also, weirdly enough, two Red Sox. Uh, but for me, the active leaders right now, because I was thinking like, okay, Cole's third fastest. That's incredible. Max Scherzer with 3,224. Justin Verlander with 3,218. Mm-hmm. So that puts Garrett Cole ninth on the active mm-hmm. list. Yeah. This strikeout, this career strikeout leader list, this record's never going to be broken, right? No. <laughs> Nolan no. Ryan. Nolan Ryan. No one's going to play as long as him. 5,000. Know. Yeah. 714. Almost 6,000. Yeah. That's almost 1,000 more than Randy Johnson. There, it doesn't matter how many guys are striking out these days. Because the guys don't pl- like p- people don't pitch as long. They also don't pitch as long in the games anymore. Like yeah. some of these guys did, you know, like when you look at older player stats and you see how many complete games they all had, you're like, whoa, because it's yeah. like you see someone he threw 13 complete games. It's like, whoa, if one guy does one complete game in two seasons, you're like amazed. Like, whoa, he threw a complete yeah, game. Wow, I can't believe they let him go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, mm-hmm. tip the cap to Garrett Cole. Obviously, he did not have his best stuff and had a couple of mistakes on Tuesday, and, and the month of May has been a little more rough for him. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that in a second. But just, I just, no one yeah. knows. This, that record is just never going to be broken. Man. No. It's never going to be broken. Uh, one of the all time, well, hey, let's be fair. We thought the all time NBA scoring record wasn't going to be broken either. That's true, so, but I really don't see this months one. Ago. I, I know this one's, this one's ridiculous, though. Yeah. Uh, anyway, do you think, <laughs> by the way, let us know in the comments, do you think Nolan Ryan's strikeout record will ever be broken? While you're in the comments section, drop your questions for Friday's show in case you're new here. Friday, we do Fan Mail Friday, so drop your questions and we will answer them. We've already gotten a couple from you this week, so thank you guys. You can catch the whole Orioles series, including Game 2 tonight at 7.05 on Sirius XM. Coming up, Garrett Cole's giving up home runs again. Let's talk about it. Have you ever forgotten about a free trial subscription and then ended up paying for it? Rocket Money can help with that. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. You could be wasting money and not even realizing it. Rocket Money helps you find those forgotten subscriptions so you can stop paying for the ones you don't use. Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Hey, back here on Locked On Yankees. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day to the everydayers out there. Coming up on Friday, yes, a couple days from now, Locked On Padres host Javier Reyes is going to join us. And we're going to chat a little bit about the upcoming weekend series. So make sure to hit subscribe on YouTube or on audio or however you listen to us. We're on Amazon too. We're on Sirius XM. We're everywhere. Like, if you can't find Locked On Yankees, like, come on, dude, figure it out. Uh, <laughs> Stace. Garrett Cole is back to his Homer ways, unfortunately. Uh, On the YouTube side, you are seeing a graph now. These are the home runs, or the pitches, I should say, that have turned into home runs this season, including the two he surrendered on Tuesday night. I'm noticing some trends here. (laughs) Uh, Six homers in his last four starts, and he didn't have any in his first seven. Stacey, are you growing concerned about this? Yes. Yes, I am. I also feel like I'm the one who jinxed him because I kept saying he hasn't given up any home runs. And then I think the next start he did. (laughs) Um, 
I mean, you knew it was coming. He wasn't going to go the whole season without giving up home runs. I mean, the best pitchers in the world can't go without giving up at least a few home runs in a season, but it's just jarring to see him go from being so dominant in April. And I know the competition wasn't as tough to being like this in May. I mean, it's not such a drastic um, fall where you're really, really concerned because he's gutting some of these starts out. But I don't know. I felt like I was watching Clark Schmidt tonight in some ways, just from some of the numbers that I was seeing from Cole. It was like not the velocity, but just his stats overall and, you know, how he's not lasting that long. And it, it's just, mm, he's got to figure it out and he will, he's Garrett Cole. I mean, he'll just five it. innings. Yeah. Just five innings on Tuesday, six hits, five earned. He walked three and only struck out two mm. and gave up a pair of home runs. Uh, they have come in pairs. Yeah. Weirdly enough. Yeah. Uh, every game he's given up two home runs when he does give up a home run, which is no correlation. There is just weird. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday night, the mistakes were again. I'm going to show the the overall chart here on screen on the YouTube side now. 95 mile an hour fastball up in the zone to Cedric Mullins. It was slightly in on the hands, but it was up in the zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then change up middle away to Gunnar Henderson at 80. That's just was a total mistake pitch. Yeah, his uh, second go around against Tampa Bay was a 98 mile an hour fastball up in the zone to Randy Arozarena, and then it was 97 center and up to Jose Siri. Uh, the first time around against the Tampa Bay Rays, 95 middle up to Jose Siri, not too different from the second home run he allowed to him. Mm-hmm. And then a hanging slider center cut to Christian Benercourt, Bentoncourt at 88. I mean, this is obvious, but for our audio listeners, everything's up, save yeah. one pitch. Um, so it's – when you're comparing May to April – I think May, he is not getting away with what he was getting away with in April, right? Because these aren't pitches. I mean, some of them, I mean, some of them are straight up mistakes. A couple of them are up in the zone, but they were playing more. They were playing better and guys were swinging and missing at them, but they're not anymore. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. It's almost like, (laughs) it's like when you, uh, not, not like a rookie, but when you see a a newer player, pitcher come into the league and the league figures him out it feels like they figured him out and yeah. <laughs> figured out Cole the adjustments, in the I, th- I think that's what's happening here is the adjustments have been made mm-hmm. the fastball is playing really well up in the zone and you gotta figure you know 98 up is good randy or Rosarena can catch up to that yeah not everybody can right be fair i don't think this is going to result in a change of style Mm-mm. a pitching style here but it should be said that there there a lot of fastballs are being hit yes so yeah. that's that is uh, that is startling mm-hmm. because it was playing so good in April. Uh huh. Because you we spoke about his opening day start and how good everything looked on that day on Tuesday's episode, and it's just such a drastic yeah. <laughs> difference. Yeah, because again, he was kind of getting away with a couple of those mistake pitches up, mm-hmm. and he isn't necessarily anymore. Yeah, I don't know. What, is there anything that you think can be done for Garrett Cole to kind of fix this problem that's starting to become a problem again? I don't know. Cause it's, it's scary to think that there are so many guys around the league that can catch up to 98 and 97, you know, cause we always talk about how much faster and how much harder pitchers throw now, but you also have these guys who can catch up to it. And it's just, it's unbelievable how talented some of these guys are around the league. And I don't know what he can do to, change that i mean i don't know if if he should mix up his pitches differently i don't know i really don't know what he should do i think there's something to be said of we definitely would have to look more at his sequencing yeah try and find that and that's Uh, always fun to to do i like you gotta really those are deep dives man Mm -hmm. those are real deep dives Mm -hmm. i will say that you know, the one, one of his only two of those six home runs have been given up on off speed pitches, which is, you know, not a ton of data. It's only six pitches over the course of a season, uh, to be fair. I mean, he almost gave up another one on Tuesday, also, to be frank. Uh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, it is telling that it's a lot of fastballs. So I think if he's going to be throwing fastballs up in the zone, I think, I mean, this is obvious, but you, you got to pinpoint those. Yeah. And, 
if the mistakes are going to keep coming, then maybe you have to make an adjustment. I think it's still a little too early to say that, uh oh, now it's a really, really bad trend. It's obviously not a good trend, Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can't, you can't abandon his pitching style. No. But you also can't just get to the point where you're going, well, they hit him, they hit him. Because then you're, you know, you're you're not making the adjustment. So I think you go a couple more starts here before you see Garrett Cole really considering changing his pitching style here and his approach to Mm -hmm. hitters. Um, It is still good that his off-speed stuff is playing down. But I think if you're throwing it up in the zone, you got to make sure it's on those corners, right? Yes. Because Yeah, it can't be anywhere in the middle because guys are going to catch up to it and hit it. It's got to be corners. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's something, again, we, we like to say this here on Lockdown Yankees, something to look out for moving forward. So the next time Garrett comes through the rotation, you got to keep an eye out for that. So where is that fastball playing right now? It plays well up, as we've said, but it does not play well up and over the middle. Right. Uh, <laughs> not all the time. I mean, it can to guys who don't have the quick hands, uh, but you just got to be careful. You just got to mm-hmm. be careful. It's a dangerous game you're playing when you're going up in the zone. Uh, Let us know what your thoughts are on this, on Garrett Cole. Are you worried that he's going to regress to last season after a really incredible April? Regress. Still had a good year last year. Uh, (laughs) But in this regard, definitely not. So let us know how you're feeling about Garrett Cole and the home run problems he's ran into. And while you're in that comment section, of course, you can let us know if you have any questions for this upcoming Friday. Uh, and we will answer them on our Friday show. So make sure to drop a question down below. The Orioles series continues tonight, 7.05. You can catch every pitch on SiriusXM. Download the SiriusXM app and search Yankees. We're going to preview that game when we come back. This episode is brought to you by our new sponsor, Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is the best place to buy men's shorts and pants that come in with a built-in liner. I've been wearing my first couple of pairs over the last week or so, and I love them. I look better, and I feel great wearing Bird Dogs. They're super comfortable, they're versatile, and they're actually cheaper than other reputable brands, which is awesome for me. I'm always looking for a good deal. Uh, and Locked On Yankees listeners, speaking of good deal, have the opportunity to get some free stuff when you place an order at birddogs.com. They have a ton of different styles and fits to choose from you'll definitely find the right fit for you you can go to birddogs.com slash locked on mlb and when you enter the promo code locked on mlb they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler with every order yes free no charge no shipping no none of that it's great that's birddogs.com slash locked on mlb do it Back here on Lockdown Yankees, game two against Baltimore after last night's fireworks. We're going to see Tyler Wells take on Nasty Nestor. I asked you on yesterday's show, Stacey, how are you feeling about uh, Nestor Cortez lately? I'm feeling better about him. He's going in the right direction. I'm feeling, I, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm feeling better about him than I am about Garrett Cole, but it's almost to that point. Wow. Which is really weird to say, considering how <laughs> the first month of the season went. Yeah, I almost feel more comfortable with Nestor on the mound. Wow, that's that's saying a lot. Uh, he's coming off a nice start. Tyler Wells uh, does not allow a lot of base runners. Mm-mm. So I think the Yankees might take a fairly similar approach that they took on Tuesday night, meaning that bunting style, that small <laughs> ball style, because yeah. they're just not going to get guys on base against mm-hmm. Tyler Wells. At least that's what he's been doing this season. Uh Fourth best whip in all of baseball. That's walks and hits per innings pitched 0.79. Wow. I know that's a stat that doesn't, it's getting more traction. It's a stat that I use personally a lot. It's a stat that I love and it tells a lot about a pitcher. Walks and hits per innings pitched. That's how many base runners are they allowing per inning, notwithstanding with hit batters. 0.79 0.79 is <laughs> extremely good, especially for a starter. For a starter, yeah. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's it's truly ridiculous. Um, he doesn't throw very hard. Fastball's up in the zone. 92-93 comes at you with five pitches. Uh, that fastball, a changeup, a cutter, slider. Uh, I guess I put change twice in here. Curve, I meant to say. Uh, mm-hmm. That changeup which is his go-to off-speed pitch, Stacey. One of the highest spinning rate 
changeups in all of baseball, 97th percentile. Mm. So what does that mean to the layman? It drops yeah. a lot. So <laughs> that's why it plays so well. Remember, I just said 92, 93 up in the zone. He averages like right there on his fastball. But if you play that up in the zone and your changeup looks like it and tumbles. Oh, yeah. You're going to That's fool, a filthy combo. Yeah, you're going to fool a lot of people with that pitch. Yep. Yeah. And he has been. He yeah. has been. So uh, watch out for that here tonight, that fastball changeup. Just like we said, remember, we're talking about um, Bradish Bradish and the slider. Uh, <laughs> it's very similar for Tyler Wells in the changeup. So it's not too different of a style that they're going, the one-two punch there. Mm -hmm. um, but so, yeah, I mean, it's just the Yankees are going to have to take advantage of whatever mistake that he makes. If. If. <laughs> <laughs> if he makes any mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you feeling about going into game two? I'm feeling okay. I am. I mean, you know, the pitching matchup kind of worries me just from the Yankees standpoint, because Wells is as good as he is. Um, but I feel a lot better now that they won on Tuesday. If especially they had, in the way that they did the comeback. Right. Especially that way, because uh, if they had lost Tuesday night's game going into the middle game, with this kind of pitching matchup, I would have been a little more worried. I mean, I'm still slightly worried, but I'm feeling better than I was. How are you feeling about the Orioles just as an AL East opponent? Oh, they're really good. I'm impressed with them. And, uh, you know, I said it the other day, I'm, I feel like the ownership didn't realize they were going to be this good this soon. They were probably expecting this more in 2024 than 2023. That's fair. And, um, you know, I mean, it's just amazing how well – Everyone in the AL East is doing, even Toronto, you know, yeah, they're in last place, but they're still better than every AL Central team, including first place. So it's yeah. just this, this uh, division is a juggernaut it and the is. Orioles are one of the best teams in it. So yeah, this is going to yeah. be a fun season for people watching the AL East. Or a nightmare, depending on your Well, if you're <laughs> in the AL East, it's a nightmare, but outside people are gonna be like, wow, that division's crazy. So mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting we'll see we'll see yeah. see if they can win the set here tonight remember it's a three game set so uh, you can catch the whole orioles series and the rest of the season on sirius xm again that game tonight at 705 drop your questions for fan mail friday of course here on our youtube side and our youtube comments and you can look forward to that friday episode because javier reyes one of the most colorful hosts in all of locked on sports uh will be joining us i love javi you know what First Yankee game I ever went to last year, I went with Javi. And we nice. had a great time. It was super, super fun. <laughs> and uh, I got to school like a, a, a Yankee fan on uh, on Oswald Peraza. So That's always cool. fun. I like schooling yeah. Yankee fans too when I'm at Yankee Stadium. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> he was drinking too much. He was yelling too much. I was like, buddy, I got this. Uh, anyway, that's coming up on Friday. Hit subscribe. Of course, we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day here on Lockdown Yankees. And that's it for today. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gatsoulias. We'll see you tomorrow.